Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Java series. In this episode, I want to show you how you can use the filter operation on streams. Alright, so last episode I showed you what streams are, explained it to you, and also I gave you a very brief um, e example of how to use a stream upon a collection of data. Or you can even use it upon an array, which is very similar. So this episode I want to show you our first intermediate operation that we're going to go over, and that's going to be the filter operation. Which is a very handy operation, and it does... Um, a lot of cool stuff. Well, it does one thing, but it does it really well. So filter allows you to sort stuff, aka filter stuff. It's really, really simple. So let's say that we have a collection of names. So list of strings, Emily sucks. Um, and that's going to be equal to arrays dot as list. This is just a very simple way of obtaining a list. You can do arrays dot as list and you can pass in a bunch of names. And I'm just going to copy these names from on my other screen real quick so I don't have to type them all out. Okay, there we go, and there we go. So now we have a list of names, Cody, Lena, Emily, Page, uh, Leilani, Jackson, Donald, Joe, and Adolph. All right, cool. So now that we have that list or collection, we can stream through it by doing Emily sucks dot stream, and then we can specify any operation. So let's do the filter operation, filter. Now, what it's asking for, if we do control P here, it says it wants a predicate. And a predicate, hopefully you know this by now, is a functional interface that, um, well, let's see what it does. So if we do new predicate, do control, oops, new predicate, do control Q, it says represents a predicate, boolean valued function of one argument. This is a functional interface whose functional method is test. So let me just press tab here. And uh, we actually went over this last episode, but here's a formal introduction. Um, it's very, very simple. It's an interface that defines one abstract method, which in this case is test. And all this method does is it returns a Boolean. And it doesn't matter what logic you, you have inside of here. Um, you know, there are some rules in terms of like mutable and immutable variables and stuff like that, but we'll go over that later. Um, but for now, you can just simply execute some logic inside of here, which represents your filter. So let's say that we want to only get names greater than four characters. To do that, we can simply do if s, which represents the name being passed in, you can call that whatever you want, dot length is greater than 4, then what? We return true. So since the name that was passed in is greater than 4, we return true, and then otherwise else return false. So now what, it, what that is going to do is it's going to take the stream, that's the source here, this is the stream that's being opened, and then we're going to filter all names greater than 4 characters. And so that's going to return a new stream, as you know from last episode, that contains only the names greater than four characters. So now we can, um, well, first of all, before we continue, we can make this more concise by using a lambda expression. So let me just cut this out and let's replace this with a lambda. So since we know that this is a stream of strings or a string of names, we could simply do a lambda of name, arrow, and then open this up and then pass in the logic of what you want to do and just rename this to name. <clears throat> And it doesn't have to be called name, of course. It can be called anything. Um, normally, you could do names. Instead of Emily sucks, you could do names. And then it would automatically suggest you to type names here. But uh, since we have Emily sucks, you know, obviously that's not going to be suggested. But it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so let's just rename this to names. Okay, cool. So now we have a stream. And that's, uh, that's a stream that's being filtered. Um, so all names greater than four characters and then after that we're going to we're going to do the for each terminal operation and we're just going to print out each of these and we saw how to do this already all we got to do is do um, well there's a couple ways you could do it but the most concise way of doing it is system dot out colon colon print line and again that's called a method reference method reference um, of course you could have done it like this just as a recap you kind of you could have done name system dot out dot print line name just like that that's, a, that's the same thing except more concise there we go so let's see what happens when we run this now we should get all the names greater than four because it's filtering out and then printing out all those new names there we go so we get emily page leilani jackson donald and adolf so let's say that we want to change this to something like um lame name dot length is less than four let's see what passes the filter and what gets printed out this time There we go. So now we only get Joe, which is interesting because Joe is the only one. I didn't even notice that. Um, I thought these would have passed, but of course these are four characters. So if we were to change this to less than or equal to four, then we would get Cody, Lena, and Joe. There we go. 
So pretty simple. You can think of a filter as like, let's say that you have, a, so often streams are called pipelines, right? So just imagine that you have a pipe and you have a filter in that pipe. That filter is gonna keep out certain things from passing to the rest of the, the pipe. So you can think of it literally as a filter upon a pipe or a tunnel or something like that. That's the best way to you know think of it or visualize it. So let's continue with some more examples here. All right, so let's do something a little more interesting. Let's say that we have a array list of array list of numbers. So just a bunch of integers. We'll call this numbers, and that's going to be equal to new array list. And let's populate this array list here, which are with a bunch of random numbers that um, we can use to filter. So we'll do for int i is equal to zero. I is less than ten thousand. I plus plus. So that's going to that's going to loop 10,000 times and then for each of those 10,000 iterations we want to do numbers.add numbers.add new random dot next integer. And so that should generate a random integer and then put it into our array list here. So now our array list should be populated with about one uh, 10,000 um, random integers. So now let's go ahead and make a stream of that. So numbers.stream and let's see, what do we want to filter for this? What's something that we could test this on um, or do for this? Let's say that we want to grab, well, first of all, let's go ahead and print out what is the result? What, is this, what does this data look like? So let's do S out numbers and let's see what we got so far. There we go. So now we get a bunch of random numbers here, integers, and a lot of them are negative about, um, I don't know how many are negative, but it looks like half of them, like generally speaking, it's 50-50. Of course, that's probably not accurate, but just by looking at it. Um, so let's see if we can do something with this. Let's try filtering out all the negative numbers from this. So only the positive numbers are going to pass the filter. So let's try that out. So let's do numbers.stream.filter. And we're going to make a new Lambda expression here. So this will be number. Open that up. And then we can do... Um, the logic here. So this returns, remember a predicate returns true or false depending on, um, so if it's true, you know, it's going to pass the filter. If it's false, it's not going to pass the filter. I should have made that clear before, but hopefully you realize that. So if number is greater than zero, then we know it's positive. So we will return true. Otherwise we can return false. Okay. And then after that, we are going to go ahead and uh, for each it again, so we'll just print out each of these so system dot out Print line just so we can see what we're working with here, and we don't need this anymore All right, so let's print this out see what we get and we should have no positive numbers anymore I mean no negative numbers. So there we go. No more negative numbers. They're all positive now. That's good Hopefully you understand this, but we have a stream of we have a array list of numbers or a collection of numbers We're streaming through it. We're filtering out all of the numbers greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, we return true, which tells the filter method that this number can pass the filter. If it's false, then it does not pass the filter and does not end up in the new stream that is created from this. And then after that, all the positive numbers are printed out one by one, as you can see down here. All right, so let's say that we wanna make this more complex. Let's say that we want to print out only the um, even numbers. So we can do if numbers greater than zero and number modulus, two is equal to zero. So that simply means that if you do number divided by two and the remainder is zero, then it's an even number, which is, you know, true. That's how you can determine if a number is even or not. So let's try this now and it should only have positive numbers. There we go. So all these endings here have a positive thingy. So, you know, they're positive. I mean, uh, not positive. I mean, uh, even. So, um, all these have, you know what I mean, but, uh, yeah. There we go. Okie dokie, so that's another example. Let's do one more example of how we can use a filter. So this time, let's make it a little more complex. Let's go ahead and make a new object here. We'll call it human. And a human is gonna have two things. It's gonna have a name and an age. So private string name, private integer age. Yeah, yeah, easy enough, right? Code, generate getters and setters. So now we have a getter and setter for each of those two fields here. And now let's go ahead, let's get rid of all this. We don't need this anymore. And let's go ahead and make a bunch of new humans. And this time, instead of using a array list or a list, we can use a hash set. So the, so the type of this hash set is going to be human. And this will be a hash set of humans. So a new hash set. 
There we go. And I'm not sure why the syntax highlighting is not showing up. That's a little weird. It looks like something's updating. I'll give that a second. Okay, I'm back finally. That took a little bit for some reason that was happening. So humans dot add, and we're just gonna we're just gonna add a bunch of humans so we can test this out. We're gonna need a constructor here though. So let's go back and make a new constructor that accepts the name and the age. So code generate constructor, and then both of them are selected, and there we go. So now we can do a name of Bob, and Bob, if I can type, is five years old. There we go, and we'll just repeat that. So humans dot add a new human, Randy. Randy is twelve years old. Humans dot add new human, Joe, and Joe is two years old. And humans dot add. I've never met a baby named Joe, Bob, or Randy. That's so rare. If your name is Joe, Bob, Randy, how? Tell me, please. How? How does that happen? Unless you're old or something like that, then it makes sense. Anyway, so what are we going to do with this? So we have a hash set of humans. Let's think about what kind of filter we can do upon this to make it legit. Um, or, you know, give you a good demonstration. I think we'll just keep it really simple. Let's just filter out every age less than 10. So what I'm going to do is recommend that you pause the video right now and try filtering out every human less than 10 years old and then put that into a new hash set, okay? See if we can do that. So let's try this out. So we'll do people.stream, oh, we called it humans. So we'll do humans.stream filter human, there we go. And if human.getAge is less than 10, then we return true. Otherwise, return false. And then, like I said, um, I want to put this into a new hash set or a new set. So instead of doing for each and then printing everything out, we could do collect, collect, and then collectors.toSet. And we'll go over collect in more detail later on, but um, I already showed how to use this last episode. So it's pretty simple. All you got to do is pass in collect and then collectors.toSet. And this means that this now returns a new uh, set that we can use. So. Let's go ahead and take this and uh, actually we'll just do hash set human uh, sorted humans is equal to humans dot stream. And what's the problem here? Well, this turn this um, collect thing here returns a set, not a hash set. So all we got to do is cast it to a hash set because um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, now we have a sorted humans hash set and we can go ahead and print this out sorted humans. There we go. Or we could have just done for each, you know, printed out each one one by one. But I wanted to show you how to collect it again. And look what we have here. We have this weird looking thing. We have me.codysimpson.human and then me.codysimpson.human. This is essentially an object representation of something uh, within your memory. Um, except it doesn't know how to print it out because we have not defined a two string method within our uh, class definition here. So we're going to do that. So code generate two string then select that. And then now we can run this and it should print out the details of the human. Now we get human, name is equal to Joe, and then age is equal to 2, and then human, name is equal to Bob, age is equal to 5. Pretty cool. And that's it. That's essentially everything you need to know to do some basic filtering upon your collections or the streams that you're using. So hopefully you enjoyed that and you found it helpful. If you have any questions about streaming or, I mean, filtering, then please let me know. I have a Discord link in the description below so you can check it out, ask for help there. You know, get involved in get involved in the community. Just uh, make sure to join that, and you know, come join and hi say hi or something like that. Anyway, also besides that, I'll have a link to my code for this episode, so you can have a written up little code thingy, so you can come back to it at any time and bookmark it in case you forget anything or you just want to review something. Make sure to check that out in the description below. And finally, if you want to support this channel, click the join button below this video. And you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month, and you can cancel it anytime you want. So yeah, if you want to support me, that's an easy way to do it. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server so you can show everyone how swaggy you are, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If not, that's okay. I still love you. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.